Welcome back. I finally managed to get hold of a neutral white Olight M2R Warrior and this was sent in via Olight. So what I wanted to do was make a video just to demonstrate uh, the differences in tint between the two beam patterns on these and also a couple of differences on the design as it's a later production model which I'll get into later on. The uh, neutral white is on the right so you'll see the LED has a darker tint than the cool white. Now from my original review you'll notice that I said that the Warrior is quite a warm light for a cool white LED and that is true compared to a lot of torches but I put them together here you can see the difference between the cool and the neutral white on the right hand side so there's quite a bit of difference on this and uh, I've also put the uh, neutral white Astrolux K1 on the right so you can see that the uh, cool white Olight is actually similar to that and the neutral white is quite a bit warmer so I'm running through some of my standard beam shots now I've not done too many of these it's enough to demonstrate the differences on the cool white you can see that there is still a fairly warm tint compared to a lot of torches I would say it's possibly around about 5,000 kelvins, but onto the neutral white you'll see it's even warmer. I would estimate roughly this is probably around about 4,000 kelvins. The lower you go down the scale, the warmer the light gets. So, and the higher you go, say 6,000 would be an even cooler tint. As you can see here with the Nightcore MH23, I'll be doing a video on this, a shootout video with the concept that has a different beam pattern. It's more focused in the middle and it's also a fair bit cooler than both of them. One of the differences with tint is certain colours can appear uh, more vivid and more natural with the lower Kelvin lights. You can see the difference here between the cool and the neutral white and it also makes quite a difference for primary colors as well although it can be subtle for example here with the cool white I have primary colors in this shot and then we switch over to the neutral white you can see that they appear a bit more vivid and richer that could be something of interest if you do uh, videos or photos at night and I met someone a few weeks ago who did um, light painting with torches he took long exposure pictures and then used the torches to fill in the area like a bridge or something he'd light that up with the torches on the light exposure so it's possibly of interest for that as well as personal preference of course a couple of differences with the hole so they have changed it on the bottom but we'll go through it in sequence so they've removed the grooves from the plastic clip section for some reason and also at the top they have added a hole on the original one on the left they don't have that it's stitched around and I'll show you on the reverse side you can see the stitching marks around it still uh, felt padded on the inside the only reason I can think for this is if you put the torch in the holster and it's on you'll see the light come out can't think of any other reason for doing that it's okay I don't have a problem with it it's just uh, that's the only reason I can think of for doing that and this just shows you the difference between with the metal ring and they've decided to go with a sewn in one a hole with the stitching around it there's also a difference on the tail cap you can see that they've gone from the flat design with the spring in the middle and they have gold plated contacts on the new one and there's also a gold plated contact instead of the spring it's uh, spring loaded underneath that so that's a change that they have made now being honest there was one time that I did try to charge the original M2R you can see here from the reverse view I can't there's nothing else different from it physically that it didn't charge um, I sometimes take it out and I re-greased up the o-ring um, with silicone grease so what I would suggest if you ever have that is just to wipe the contact on the torch just on the edge not on the thread and you'll see that the uh, that will clean that up and you'll get some marks come off on the uh, tissue paper here now I only ever had that once and once I did that it charged fine so that may be one of the reasons why they changed the design on the tail cap with the springs and the gold plated contacts just to provide a better contact i've never had a problem with accessing the strobe mode or the turbo has to be said now as far as charging on the new one again obviously that's brand new so that works fine so that's a design change that they have made if you ever have any problems try cleaning it also clean the contacts on the inside of the tail cap as well because sometimes you can get silicone grease on that I still like the warrior I still think it's a very nice torch it's not perfect there are a few things that I might change uh, I know some people might prefer a more tactical beam I do quite like the beam pattern on this but it has to be said it's more floody versus range it still has a decent range but it's more of an everyday type beam pattern than a genuine tactical long range tighter beam pattern I don't mind that myself but I would like to see something 
which would possibly uh, have something with a longer range beam. Also, as I mentioned previously in the other video, I would like to be able to take the bezel, unscrew that, and possibly be able to attach uh, either a more aggressive strike bezel or of more interest would be something like a red filter because there is space to have a little uh, section on the pouch where you could just slip a filter in. I'd find a red filter quite useful. It would just make the torch an even better one. And I already think it's quite a nice one. It's just something for a future improvement. If you've got any thoughts on the Warrior or any experiences, just leave a comment below and I'll catch up with you in the next one.